what we're going to do in today's tutorial is we are going to practice graphing quadratic equations by first identifying the line of symmetry of the parabola created by the given quadratic equation and then identifying the vertex of the parabola which will be located somewhere on that line of symmetry and then after that we're going to find other points that the parabola is going to go through by creating a function table. All right, the first thing that we want to do is identify the line of symmetry. Now, we should understand that this formula right here, negative b divided by 2a, is a way to figure out where does the line of symmetry run through the x-axis. Now, if you take a look at this equation right here, this is already in standard form. Remember, standard form is really a times x to the second power plus bx plus c. So if we take a look at each corresponding term to the standard form here, the letter in front of x here, this a, represents the coefficient of x squared, which is 5. So we would say that a equals 5, and we would say that b equals negative 20, and we would say that c is equal to positive 15. Now for this equation here, we really only need our b value and the a value to figure out where our line of symmetry is going to be. So let's go ahead and substitute all corresponding values. So we start off with negative b, so we write negative whatever b is, and that is negative 20. And for our denominator, we multiply 2 times a, and the a in this case is 5. So all we do is simplify this down to one answer. Now the opposite of negative 20, of course, is positive 20 over 10, and 20 over 10 is equal to 2. So we would say that our line of symmetry is going to be equal to 2. So what we're going to do is locate 2 on the x-axis right here, and we are going to create a vertical line that is going through 2 on the x-axis. So this dotted line right here represents the line of symmetry of our equation 5x squared minus 20x plus 15. Now it is important to remember that when using this equation here, the result you're going to end up getting just tells you where the vertical line is going to end up passing through the x-axis. This does not actually give you the vertex yet. It only gives you the x value of your vertex. So the vertex of our parabola can be anywhere on this line right here. What we need to do now is figure out if x is equal to 2, what is the y value going to be when x is equal to 2? And that will give us the vertex of our parabola. So once you know where the line of symmetry intercepts the x-axis, what you need to do is take whatever equation you are working on. In this case, we have 5x to the second power minus 20x plus 15. And you want to substitute that x value into your equation. And the result you end up getting is going to be the corresponding y value. So we're going to take this x here and substitute 2. And then we're going to take this x right here and substitute 2 once again. Now in the end, we just have this constant here of 15. All right, so now all we have to do is solve this right here. And this is going to give us our corresponding y value. So first, we have to square this 2 here, which is 4. And 4 times 5 is 20. And then we have to take this 20, which we have to consider a negative because of this minus sign, and multiply negative 20 times 2, and that is negative 40. So we just write minus 40. And then we have to add 15 at the end. All right, so 20 take away 40 is negative 20, and negative 20 plus 15 results in negative 5. So what we would say is when the x value is equal to 2 for this function, we would say that its corresponding y value is negative 5, which will be the vertex of our parabola. So let's go ahead and plot this point on our coordinate plane. So we're going to go over to positive 2 here, and then we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and create our vertex. Okay, now that we know the coordinates of our parabola's vertex, what we want to do is figure out, is this point going to be a minimum or a maximum? Now, it is going to be a minimum if our parabola opens upwards. So if we get a shape like this, then our vertex is going to be a minimum. And if 
our parabola opens downwards, then our vertex is going to be a maximum. Now to figure this out, all we have to do is look at the a term of our equation. In this case, it is positive five. And because it is a positive value, that means we are going to get a parabola that opens upwards. So our parabola is gonna go something like this in either direction. Now to draw a more accurate picture, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function table. So we're gonna pick some random x values and then plug those values into our equation to figure out what the corresponding y values are gonna be. Now we already know that when x is equal to two, the corresponding y value is negative five, and that is the vertex of our parabola. Now what I'm gonna do as I'm creating this function table is I'm going to create a symmetrical function table. And you're gonna see what I mean by this in a moment. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to two on the x-axis, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick one unit to the right, which is three. So I am going to write a three right here. Okay, notice that the first x value that I randomly chose was three, which is one unit to the right of positive two. So now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go one unit to the left of positive two, which is positive one. And that is what I mean by making a symmetrical function table. And I'm gonna go back to two now, and I'm going to go two units to the right of two, which is positive four. And then I'm going to do the same thing and go two units to the left of positive two, which would be zero. All right, so what I like to do usually is I like to put my vertex somewhere in the middle of my function table, and then I like to go a unit up, and then a unit down, and then two units up, and then two units down. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take this first x value, three, and plug it into our equation and see what the corresponding y value is going to be. So we're gonna write five, three to the second power, minus 20 times three plus 15. All right, the first thing we do is square three, which is nine. So we're gonna multiply five times nine, which is 45. And then we're gonna multiply 20 times three, which is 60. And then we have to add 15 at the end. 45 take away 60 is negative 15 and negative 15 plus 15 is equal to zero. So when x is equal to three, y is going to be equal to zero. All right, now this is where making a symmetrical function table is going to be to our advantage. So the reason I did this is because if we started with two, which is where our line of symmetry is located and went one unit up to get three, well, if we go one on the other side of two or one below two, what's gonna end up happening is our y value is gonna be identical. So if one to the right of two, which is three, gives us zero, one to the left of two, which is one, is also going to give us zero. But let's just verify the results so you can see the math. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take five and then we're gonna plug in this x, which is one. We have to square it, minus 20 times one and then we have to add 15 at the end. All right, so let's take one and square it, which is of course one, and one times five is five, minus 20 times one, which is 20, plus 15. And then we have five take away 20, which is negative 15, plus 15, which is equal to zero. So when x is equal to positive one, y is equal to zero. All right, now let's plug four into our equation to see what the corresponding y value is gonna be. So we have five times four to the second power minus 20 times four plus 15. All right, so now we're gonna do five times four to the second power, which is 16 minus 80 plus 15. Five times 16 is 80. And then we have to take 80 and subtract 80 and then add 15. And 80 take away 80 is zero and zero plus 15 is 15. So when X is equal to four, the corresponding Y value that we get 
is 15. So 4 was our input, and the output is 15. Now, because 4 is 2 units above where our line of symmetry is, on the opposite side of 2, or 2 below, would be 0. And that will yield us the same y value. So as you get used to this technique, just remember that whenever you have another x value that is the same distance away from another x value from the x that is where your line of symmetry is located, you're going to end up getting identical y values. All right, now we have five points that will allow us to draw the general shape of our parabola. Remember, the more points you have, the more accurate it's going to look. But these five points should be enough just to give us a general idea of how our parabola should look. So let's graph 0, 15, which would be here, and then up 15. And by the way, this is the y-intercept of our parabola. Whenever x is 0, whatever the y-value is, is going to be your y-intercept. All right, the next point is at 1, 0. So we go to positive 1, but we do not go up or down. And by the way, this is one of the x-intercepts of our parabola. So whenever you have 0 as your y value, the corresponding x value with that y value of 0 is going to be what we call a root of our equation, which means this point right here is going to be another root. So the points at which your parabola intercepts the x-axis are going to be your roots. So let's go ahead and plot this root right here. That is going to be positive 3, 0. And this last point is 4, 15. So we go over 4 on the x and up 15 on the y. All right, so our parabola is going to end up going through these five points right here. So this point down here is the minimum or the vertex of our parabola. These two points right here are the roots of our parabola. And this point right here intercepts the y-axis. So this point is the y-intercept of our parabola. All right, so remember, there are many different ways that you guys can graph equations. But with this example, what we did is we identified where is our line of symmetry going to be located. And once we figured out what that x value is, we plugged that into our equation to get the corresponding y value which is going to be our minimum or maximum. In this case, it was a minimum. And then after that, what we did is we created a function table, but I like to create a symmetrical function table when possible, because if you know what the y values are of the x values, the other x values, which are the same distance away from that x value, will yield the same y values, making your job just a little bit easier. 